Hey guys, it's me, Half Dork. Welcome. So, today we are uh, continuing our trading card game experimentation in the Sandbox Game Maker. Thank you, Sandstorm, for uh, hosting this endeavor. I see Slaterades here in chat. The first thing we'll do is uh, just recap that there is a Sandstorm sponsored contest where you can make a asset in Vox Edit with the Steampunk theme and we'll be sure to mention this a couple times throughout the stream but if you are interested you can get steampunked where the world can be amazing even when it's slightly strange so we need a lot of skilled engineers and mechanics to create awesome steampunk vehicles specifically so we're looking for uh anything with wheels or wings or some way to get around maybe like a pogo jumping Little, uh, what are those, what do they call those? Pogo sticks. <laughs> a pogo jumping pogo stick. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. But, uh, one thing I should mention is it's not, uh, 5,000 USD. It is 5,000 sand is the rewards for this prize pool. So, uh, down here we can see the prize pool. 5,000 sand, 1,500 for first place, second place, 1,000 sand, third place, 800 and fourth place 700 fifth place 500 and then sixth through tenth all 100 sand so if you are uh free you've got time on your hands and you've got an idea in your mind you can make a steampunk vehicle by november 25th is the deadline so that'd be uh, a lot of fun uh that's gonna be friday so feel free to uh hop on it <laughs> pogo on it if you will and so outside of that uh that's the only ongoing box edit contests that sandstorm's hosting so make sure to uh give it a go if you're available hey welcome in guys i see trap editions here it used to be equals <laughs> maybe maybe some other time yep i i miss it too trap edition i mean this time last year it was well under a dollar that's worth mentioning so you know crypto fluctuates it is what it is but until then, we're going to keep creating, cre keep building in our favorite metaverse, the Sandbox. Sandstorm, I know they prefer Sandbox over that other Decentraland, which honestly is looking very good. Every time I, I catch, uh, I think it's uh, DLC or DCL curations. Anyway, we're going to stick to Sandbox. It's my forte, but I do want to check out Decentraland once in a while. But today, we're working on the trading card games. So, if you are interested in the things I've been working on, uh, most of it has been exclusively on this Sandstorm stream. So you'll be able to catch those recaps on YouTube. Uh, we've been kind of creating a gravity-based RNG, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, we've also had a couple Vox Edit sessions where we're making cards, and I'm very happy with how these turned out. Uh, I essentially purchased... And so this is worth mentioning. I did not make this pixel art. This pixel art was purchased uh, to be used in games, in video games. Uh, no matter what you know website you go to, uh, there are licenses that allow you to use assets made by others for your video games. As long as I'm not trying to resell the art, like these are good to go. And so I went ahead and put together like these very simple cards. Uh, they do have a back on them as well where they have a ribbon that we're going to put text on top of. And then we also uh, have a price at the bottom. I'm debating on whether or not to have a literal number on the bottom. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> and lastly, it's uh, it's got like a description here in this empty portion. So we can see how that looks in game. Uh, with this one here, the heat spray. So we're probably going to be setting up the other cards and then making presets. So that's a, a big to-do on our to-do list. And then we're going to revisit our RNG. And we're going to be making those cards that we create here into our RNG deck. And what we want to do is be able to draw, by the end of the stream hopefully, uh, be able to draw randomized cards based on which one we're kind of like picking. So essentially, uh, we have RNG associated with each one of these numbers and we're picking them and when it picks that 
you know, number, that RNG, it's going to spit out the associated card. And so with all of our cards here, uh, we have like associated rarities. So I'll go ahead and put those in order as we make them. Uh, so we have like two cost cards, we have three cost cards, and we have one cost cards. So looking at these, it seems as though I have a four to five one costs, uh, two or three, it looks like three two costs. We have a three cost, a four cost, and then finally a five cost. And so all of these cards, each are going to have their own unique name and identifier, and we're going to turn them into presets. So we're going to get started with that. Uh, we've already made one, so just taking another look at it. You can see here I have the name, and then I would put this number here before I started putting the uh, pink kind of diamonds. So what I'll do is I'll probably take out the number, the two there, and we're just going to be focusing on the name and the text. So what each one of our cards will do. Half of you don't mind, Sister Edition. I'm learning Game Maker and do want to know how I can make my character have an ability to come into some buildings. The issue is, is that there is no collision. I can go through all of the building. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, uh, Trap Edition, uh, the best way to go around that, and here I'll just kind of demonstrate real quick, is rather than have, you know, the building itself be enterable, because I, I can say uh, without, you know, much doubt that you're putting all of your buildings on one asset. So what you'd rather do is have the door separate. So just using this as an example, would make the door its own asset, and then the building would be a different asset that would usually be exported separately. And so that allows you to have the openable door that, as you can see, uh, when it's open, it removes the collision from it. And so that way only the door has that kind of uh, behavior on top of it. The building itself then won't be affected. I hope that answers your question, Trap Edition. But yes, generally speaking, you want your door and your building itself to be two different objects or assets. So you'll probably have, you know, an empty frame where the door of your building will be, especially if it's a large building. If it's a relatively small building, uh, the only other piece of advice I would give is to have zero animations. So for example, if there's like water trickling outside of your building, like there's a waterfall from top to bottom, you can't uh, necessarily have that on your building because it's going to make your entire building uh, collidable. And if you want to go inside of the building, there just means you can't have any animations. So I hope that helped. Uh, but for now, uh, feel free to ask more questions. You know, you are more than welcome to it. I greatly enjoy, you know, troubleshooting and helping people learn Game Maker. Because I, I really honestly have a lot of fun just building in Sandbox, in the Game Maker. Learning new mechanics is what I usually do in my own personal streams. I generally <laughs> kind of like try to find things that nobody's found before or try to make my own version of common things, such as RNG, such as having, you know, a unique way of picking randomization. So we're gonna go back to our top-down camera. I like 24, we're gonna lock the camera. Uh, one thing I'll need to do is reverse all of these, flip them upside down, because that's where our camera's gonna be pointing. Cool. And so we can see here, I've duplicated heat spray. That's now I just need to move down the associated assets that represent the text. And because of the way our camera is positioned, uh, I'll generally be like running back and forth. These are, think of it as my hand. So the cards in my hand. So we want these lower by perspective. A little bit too low. All right. 
Maybe just like a centimeter further. Doink. Cool. And now I'm going to start duplicating these and putting them on each card. One thing with the current game maker is you have to select them uh, based on whichever one is newer. So for example, if I select this one on the right, then select this one on the left, when I duplicate, it's actually on deselecting the newest ones and it's keeping the old ones selected. So that's useful in some situations, but if you want to avoid that and have the new assets selected, you just uh, make sure whichever one you're clicking first was the newest of your pair. Cool, and so now we'll put these in place. Looks like it right on the tip of our diamond here. Here's to be where we had them. So I can even save more time by duplicating these. I don't think my cards were spread out evenly. One thing we at Sandstorm were trying to avoid was streaming at the exact same time as uh, Sandbox. But every time we try to uh, dodge them, it's just we keep stepping on their toes and vice versa. But uh, if there is like a specific time you guys think we should be streaming, let us know. Last thing we want to do is you know, impose on people. All right, let's check some of this text. You can see heat spray, heat spray, heat spray. Yeah, yeah, looks good. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And freaking tastic. All right, we'll check our work. Well, obviously, they're not all going to be called heat spray. So let's go ahead and put in the names for each of these. And if you're here in chat hanging out, you're welcome to uh, suggest a name as we go along. I'll probably be uh, just coming up with something on the spot. So this one, I was thinking uh, wing. Yeah, just wing. <laughs> uh, chicken wing. Nope. A uh, hot wing. <laughs> I mean, that sounds funny. So hot wings. That show on YouTube, Hot Ones. Yeah, it's Hot Ones. And then we want to have a specific text here. So instead of deal, this one would probably uh, be like a speed boost. And none of this is set in stone. But what we can do is save it as a preset and then overwrite it when we're ready to. In fact, I'll probably just keep the the deal one attack on everything, and we're just going to customize the name. And we'll come back to uh, the text for most of these. This one we'll call like Recharge. Recharge. This one I like is Bug Bite. I try not to overcommit to any ideas I have. I've realized that the more you, you know, put all your eggs in one basket, uh, you're kind of relying on certain things. So what I like to do is I'll have like a ground floor rough draft of everything I do. And then I fine tune it once everything's finally connected and working together. So like these cards, for example, like, let's just say I make the entire card, this entire bug bite card from start to finish. Like I get all the art, I change the text on it, like that, and we'll say it takes me like three hours. But then like when the game's almost finished, I realize, oh, you know, this isn't balanced. 
I have to go back and then rethink about it. And so it's like some of that work just becomes void. Let's see, what's this one? We'll do uh, heat spikes. This one we'll call synapse. This one will be quick attack. We've got Scorching Ray. One thing I do need to keep in mind is the length of the text as well. So if that's too long, it's going to uh, separate itself onto a different layer. And so we don't want that. So we'll have to attempt to, you know, make shorter text, really. It's the best way to do it. Or we can... Uh, reduce the size of the text itself. It evolve. Oh, we'll save it and see how it looks. Cool, so we've got hot wings, recharge, bug bite, heat spikes, synapse, quick attack. So here's what I was just talking about, scorching ray, it's too long. We'll uh, rename it something simpler. Everything else looks great. That maybe evolve is too over. That's so scorching ray. We'll change to like try uh, heat seeking missiles, something like that. Try missile. No, heat missiles. The word for hot. Triferno. Uh, try shot. Mm, I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling that. Uh, we'll just do try shot for now, though. Cool. So now that I have my cards, I'm going to start presetting them, and then with the presets, I'll be able to uh, input them into my RNG. Simple as that. Cool. So with our first selection, we originally had made the anchor point for everything. I'm debating on whether or not to keep this anchor point mechanic. Uh, what's important to note is the anchor point is on the top of it. So that allows me, as the player, to pick it up from that angle. So... I'm no longer picking it up, you know, in our newest variation of our game. Instead, I'm selecting, but I still need to be able to select. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll attempt to put a speaker component on this and see if I can select it from the front here. It looks like I can. So that tells me that I no longer need that anchor point that we had made. So we can see here, I have heat spray one. If we go into our hierarchy, one thing we'll do is make sure all of these have the same text. Heat spray number pad one. This is heat spray number pad two. Okay, great. So now I'm going to just remove the parent structure. So now it's just this. And that's all we want. It'll also be easier to uh, locate in our inventory. So we'll go ahead and save it. And this is going to be a new preset so that we're starting from scratch here. So we'll do TCG uh, underscore heat dash spray. Cool. So I should be able to delete this. And just to test our preset real quick. Yeah, it works great. All right, so now I'm gonna start saving these presets and we'll test all of them. So the first thing I need to do is make sure all of the names are the same. Well, it looks like I named this Flutter. I actually like Flutter more than Hot Wings. <laughs> Hot Wings sounds so dumb. Flutter. 
We'll do TCG underscore flutter. This is the number pad, so we'll save it as that. And notice how I'm just overwriting the number pad text. That's just so I can find it easier. When I search in the hierarchy. And I did A because that stands for anchor point. You can see it moves up and down, no problem. And then I'm going to save it as a preset. So do create new, this will be TCG underscore flutter. And now if I search TCG underscore, I'm getting that flutter. Flutter. And ideally, I'm going to be above the cards. So that gives us the three dimensional like text on top of it. Great. So far, so good. So we can delete these. Moving on, we've got TCG underscore, what did we call this one? This is recharge. Take that, we'll add the number pad. Then we'll go into our hierarchy. You can just search recharge and we'll find them. I can drop it, move it around. Looks good. We got to save it as a preset. Create new ECG underscore recharge. And some repeat. This will be TCG underscore bug dash bite. Bug bite number pad. Bite number pad. I'm going to go ahead and name all these. This one's Heat Spikes. Uh, probably do... Or this one, Hot Body. Those all sound weird. We'll do Hot Spike. We'll just change the name of it. ECG underscore Hot Dash Spikes. Number pad. Number pad. And Hot Spikes. Perfect. This one's TCG underscore synapse. Got synapse number pad. And better number pad. Rapid dash. <laughs> That's what I named it. Uh, what is this one? Quick attack. I mean, hot shot actually sounds pretty cool too. We'll do hot shot. TCG underscore hot dash shot number pad. A number pad. Hot shot. Uh, I do want to rename this one though. This one's hot spikes. So we'll do like, um, what's the, <laughs> sometimes I'll open up thesaurus whenever I'm looking for words. Honestly, it does help. So we'll find a synonym for hot, blazing, humid, scorching, sizzling, sweltering, warm, uh, boiling. I do like blaze. Ooh, I like blaze spikes, actually. So that's a relatively easy change. Blaze spikes. Blaze dash spikes. Cool. We'll just save our progress for now, just in case. We're here. Our synapse. We got our hot shot. We got our tri scorch. What's another word we could use? Sweltering. Spicy. We <laughs> could use spicy. Uh, burn. Is there another word for three? Like trio? Trioferno. Trioferno. That's kind of dumb. 
Does anybody have a name <laughs> idea for that? Uh, three. Scorchers. I like Scorcher. Scorch. Scorcher. Yeah, we'll stick with it. No matter what I do, it all sounds dumb. Cool, so we'll do PCG underscore Scorcher. Copy that. And put it in the next one. This just helps me find it when I put it in the hierarchy. Cool. So here's combustion. We'll do TCG underscore combustion. Copy that. That here, number pad. That here, number pad. And then the last one, we had the evolve. So this is like our super special rare card in our deck, I guess. So we'll do TCG evolve. TCG Evolve number pad and TCG Evolve number pad. Perfect. So now I'm going to save it and then we're going to make the presets. <laughs> okay, so we had our recharge, which is already made, so we're good there. Bug bite, drag and drop, move it up. Perfect. Got our blaze spikes. Drag it up. Perfect. Synapse. Drag it up. Perfect. Hot shot. Catch those. Move it up. We're good to go. Got Scorcher. Combustion. And Evolve. All right, everything's connected. Fantastic. So, quick uh, little break to tell you about our current contest. So, if you didn't know, Sandstorm is still doing box edit contests. So, if you want to get involved and learn how to, you know, make something, this is a great way to get started. You can make an asset with a steampunk vehicle theme that is a uh, Potential to earn you some sand. The world can be amazing when it's slightly strange. So any engineers or mechanics out there that want to create a steampunk vehicle, head to the workshop and create yourself a steampunk themed vehicle. Should be a lot of fun. So 5,000 sand for the prize pool. First place getting 1,500. Second place 1,000. Third place 800. Fourth place 700. Fifth place 500. And sixth through 10th 100 sand. Well worth it if you're available this week. The deadline is November 25th. So make yourself a cool steampunk vehicle and submit it to the Sandstorm. So back into our trading card game. All of our cards should now be connected and they should show up in our inventory here. Uh, oh wait, we got to make the presets. So let's uh, save these. Do TCG underscore recharge. And all I'm doing is selecting the uh, parent here. Do TCG underscore bug dash bite. Uh, whenever there's a space, I'll usually use a hyphen. Whenever there is a category or tag, when I'm naming things, I'll usually use an underscore. So like a separation. So like TCG is the name of this project, for example. This one is our underscore blaze spikes this one is tcg underscore synapse we have tcg underscore hot a shot this one is tcg underscore a scotcha Gotta say it like you're in a, a Japanese action movie. Here is TCG, a combustion. Very anime style. That's how you get into it. This is TCG Evolve. Nice. So now with all those set, we'll first 
test and make sure they are working. And they're all going to say deal one attack, and that's fine for now. We're essentially going to uh, revisit these once we're happy with them. Or once we're happy with the rest of the game, I should say. But having all these variations of cards is going to be useful in the future. So we got Blaze Spikes, Bug Bite, Combustion Evolve, Flutter, Heat Spray, Hot Shot, two recharges. Why do I have two recharges? We'll take a look at that. It's like I saved recharge twice. Which is strange because it would generally override itself. So I'll delete one of them. Because we don't want duplicates. That would bite us in the butt later. But everything else looks good to go. So I'm going to delete these. And make sure I don't accidentally delete anything I shouldn't. Delete them one at a time. Did we get the evolve? Yeah, we did. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different cards. So the idea here is we're going to make ten cards on on every other one of our RNG numbers. So basically one through twenty, you know, one through ten is gonna be one of those ten cards. Eleven through twenty will be the you know pair to that same card. So the first thing we'll do is go back to a different camera so we can see everything around us. And we'll just do a quick recap here. So we start our game. When we start our game, the RNG is supposed to begin. Uh, the first turn, we're going to have a set number of cards. End turn. We now see the ball is dropping. So that's kind of our RNG at play. Now the car that was chosen should have been given to us. But I should be able to end my turn again. We can see the RNG's moving again. Now it's my turn again. So one thing to note is it's hard to see what's happening with this so high up. So this is where my ball is spawning from. Instead, we're going to start with 10, 1 through 10 here. So we're going to make a, a number for each one of these. Try this again. We've got our start game going. And turn. Now we see the ball is started. Now have start turn. And our ball was caught by the fourth door there. So that means our next turn, we're going to be drawing whatever the fourth card was. Okay, so now our ball is on the first floor. So that means whatever card we draw is going to be on the fourth floor. So we set this up last time. And I think this is where we left, left off. Is I need now to set up all of my cards to where they have tags. And so they're detected. So that's something we're going to be doing with our presets that we just made. So we're going to do alphabetical order. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we'll start with our first three here. And I think sequentially, we should be going up. Or it looks like we're going down. So that's number 20. That means this one's number 19. So we're starting with these over here. We're going to be spawning those same cards on top of our detector, or at least near, so it can detect it. It's in the radius, so it doesn't really matter as long as it's close by. Cool. So we're going to be spawning the preset that we made, so TTG. And we're going alphabetical, so blaze spikes. When it spawns, it's only on the start.turn message, and it's when the first card was selected. So as we saw in our stack, that was this bottom portion. So if the ball drops here and it's caught by our doors, so these are carpets, quite literally, as the asset is called, it's a carpet, but it's using the door behavior to catch our RNG ball that is falling to represent, you know, hey, we, we picked this card for you on your next turn. Congrats. Buenos dias. What's up, Roxy? G Wiz, welcome. 
trying to team compliance with naming. It's part of your job in motion pictures. Creatives hate me for it. Hey, it's um one of my uh, directors back when I was working for a YouTube studio. Like that was a ongoing problem. Is like, what naming convention will future proof us for ten years? And the answer was to do like a tw- 2020 underscore 10 underscore, you know, 31. And then it, it basically doing it by day, which honestly worked. It worked pretty well. Cool. So responding to that card, that card actually needs a tag. The tag is going to be TCG slash fire slash one. So we're probably going to be making duplicates of each one of these. But we also don't have to. Instead, we could do tag. And then we can also make a tag for the 11th as well. So it's going to have both of those. For now, this should be fine. This could cause problems in the future. If I separate both of these stacks here, it should be okay. Basically, one will spawn here. And then if we ever get number 11, it's going to spawn right there. Cool. Uh, these are going to need health in the future, but for now, we're going to just do it play by play. So now we'll do TCG underscore blaze spikes. Oh, Roxy, by the way, congratulations on uh, one of your best ideas for uh, Ballad of the Soulless. Big congrats to you, Roxy Miguel. Amazing. So TCG underscore blaze dash spikes. I don't know if you saw. Oh, and Slater 8 also pointed it out. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, sometimes we get whole TV shows sent on hard drives. Oh, yeah, thousands of files, I imagine. Jeez. Yeah, I worked for a YouTube studio, so it was like same-day delivery almost. A lot of the videos we made, it's like through the week, so usually like turnaround time of a week. But still, like that amount of content just going through. Like an organization is very important. Okay, so we made that one. We're going to repeat that process. So oh, here's bug bite. So now we're doing TCG2 and then TCG12. So it's getting two different tags. And we'll resave the preset. I will have to come back and re-edit the tags. But again, this is, you know, for our own benefit to kind of walk through, you know, mechanics. I try to do things one at a time rather than all at once. Combustion. Tag it. 13, and then we'll save it. TCG underscore combustion. Delete it. All right, so now those will be detected and then send out the relative message to destroy one, two, and three. So we're going to try and get the ball to land on one of these. So we can see it's destroyed once that card is selected. All right, let's try it. And once that happens, we're pretty much set with our cards, you know, and the RNG aspect. There are some potential pitfalls to avoid. But we'll, we'll have to jump those gaps when we get to them. Oh, so we started on number 10 there. I think what we'll do is, for now, uh, basically have all of our cards presetted to where we can see any of them that get selected. So here's number four. Because otherwise, I can't really see what I'm testing. Easy G Fire 4 and 14. Save the preset. Flutter, heat spray, and hot shot. This is number five and fifteen. Take that name and we'll resave the preset. Ooh, did I do plus new? I don't think so. 
installed. Okay, we're good. This is Flutter. Perfect. I gotta have my meme still turned on. Cool. That was saved. Go to number six that we're on. This is number five. Here's six. Take the name. Re preset it. We're just saving over the old preset. Seven. And 17. And we save the preset. Get that name. That save it. Kind of happened really quick. I guess we can just drag and drop it back in. It did not save it. Interesting. So the tag, I don't think saves it when it's on your hot bar. So if we go to hot shot and then put it on the field again, then it saves the tag. So does that mean these ones also aren't working? Oh, okay. So fun bug that we just found. Not really fun. Annoying bug. <laughs> Bugs fly around your head. You have to get rid of them. Anyway, if you have something on your hot bar and it's a preset, you have to remove it from your hotbar when you save a new preset. Otherwise, it has the old version still on your hotbar. So that does not help you at all. So, yeah, we have our old tags on this version of my card. But if I put the new version of my card from the inventory on the field, it has the updated tags. That's uh, definitely worth mentioning. All right. Now we got 8, 9, and 10 here. We just did 6 and 7. Here's 8, 9, and 10. Again, we're taking the tag that we're looking for, pasting it, and then we're also pasting the plus 10 version and then i'm taking the name of it copying finding the old preset and saving over it Done. same deal the new tag pasting placing the plus 10 version and then also taking the name and overwriting the previous preset and we have our Last but not least, PCG 10, facing it here, save, and 20, save. Making the name, copy. In our presets, synapse, paste, delete. Make sure we remove the old presets so that the new ones work. All right, so with those set up, now all of these are awaiting the spawning of our new presetted cards. Okay, so we have heat spray. Uh, so this one's the correct one. So we went out of order anyway. The TCG underscore. We want bug bite for that. This one we're going to want combustion. This one we're going to want evolve. This one we want flutter. This one's going to be heat spray. This one is hot shot. Recharge. Torture. And then finally, finance. So, uh, the last thing I'll do is I'll actually duplicate all of these and put them in front of our player so we can see, you know, the cards themselves actually spawning. 
This is all for testing. I'm going to remove these when we're ready for them. Save. And we'll test it out. All right, start game. So the first card should start spawning on when we hit start turn here. So we can see the cards are, you know, the uh, ball is falling to pick our card. And cool, we've picked Synapse, which was the number two card. We can see it's upside down, uh, and that's just because my asset spawners I flipped around. We go over here. You can see it's facing the right way. On it picked number 10 to start with. And our ball here is basically picking the next card. So if everything's set up correctly, the next card that we draw will be alphabetically the second card. I don't really recall which one that was. But we can see second card was chosen. Now we have Bug Bite. So alphabetically, Bug Bite was our second card. And wherever the ball is now, that's where the next card is going to spawn. Bug Bite up here. I don't see the ball at the moment. Okay, so number nine is the next card that's going to spawn. Nice. Number nine is that Scorching card. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to make sure every card is being read. Because otherwise it's pretty much set. We're ready to uh, put more turns in. You can see the ball is basically waiting to be detected by the next objective. And it looks like seven will be the next card that spawns. So new turn. So six will be the next card that spawns. And so it does have a lot to do with the rhythm. Uh, as soon as you know which card is spawned, basically by drawing it, if you're able to play your cards and end your turn, you know, within a time frame, you could technically know what comes next. But again, that's also that, that takes a lot of understanding of our, my game mechanics here. Right now, card number five is about to spawn. And now, number four is being caught. So we can see three cards remain in my deck. And then once we have cycled all of our cards, we're essentially going to be resetting the deck. So everything will restart. there is a sequential order here uh and that's just how the ball kind of fell so for example it is kind of weighted in favor of other cards so with that being said i should probably put the more expensive cards near the bottom because those are weighted to be a little bit rarer but at the same time rng doesn't really reward anybody. It should be random. So we're kind of weighting our deck in a way, which could be a problem. And that's all because the ball is falling and because all of those are currently missing, it's falling on the next thing. And so that's literally like two to three seconds of fall time that just goes to the the topmost card, which in this case is number three. So there is a bit of a, a problem there. I'll give it more thought, but for now the mechanic works and I couldn't be happier about that. Uh, the new problem is I need all of these cards to be destroyed because, well, they're just getting in the way. <laughs> so I'll probably give them a health component because that has like a cool effect when they're destroyed. So let's go to our presets here.
and we're going to give it a health component. We're going to hide the health life bar. Instead, it's just going to destroy itself. And we'll do a zero second death delay. Sure, we'll see how it looks. And the death message is going to be... Well, we can't make it unique. Hmm. The only problem we have right now is that the death message itself is unique and we have 20 cards. And if I'm duplicating this card, I would have to make a, a different preset for the number 11 anyway. Which I guess there's not really a problem in making a secondary preset. It's just, it's, I guess, extra work, which isn't really a problem. What we'll do is we're going to make new presets for each and I'm just going to remove the opposite tag. And then that way we can do the kill carpet one and so that death message is going to be associated with actually spawning the card so we can see here it detects my carpet or it detects my card and then sends out that same message which will then in turn destroy it and it's only destroying it on uh, the selection phase. It's not actually removing it from my hand at the moment. That might cause a problem later, but we'll see. I don't think it will because uh, it's not going to spawn in my hand until the following turn. Oh, same deal here. We're going to remove the number one, and now it's going to be kill .carpet eleven. Cool. With those set up, we'll resave our presets. So we'll go back to the presets. The blaze spikes. The TCG underscore blaze spikes. And then for an identifier, I'm going to put number one and for this one we're going to save it's a new preset and we're going to do boy spikes number 11. delete delete and then we're going to rinse repeat we basically have two versions of every card uh, that way we can have a 20 card deck Escape from artists. What's happening, dude? Welcome in. We have a health component. We will hide our health bar. Uh, one thing we might do in the future is have a message on death. But again, these are things we can plan ahead for. We won't worry about it right now. Instead, we'll set one over to the side. This one's going to be our 12. This one will be our 2. And it's going to be destroyed on kill dot carpet at two and this one is kill dot carpet uh, 12 and so I say kill dot carpet because that's this relative uh, ball stopper <laughs> so that's how you look at it so now we're gonna save it I'm gonna make sure I take the name tag and we're going to find the preset and overwrite the first one so this one will be number one, or this is number two. Then we'll save this one, and this one we're creating a new one, so this will be number 12. Delete and delete. So now both of our spawners here, we can associate with 11, and this one was 12. And our detectors we already set up the other day, where this one's looking for number 12, and this one's looking for number 11. So we'll rinse repeat with the next cards. Combustion. We're making a health component. We're duplicating it. Edit the logic. Hide the health bar. Kill.carpet.13. Remove the previous tag. That one's set. This one, remove the newer tag. 
This one will be kill dot carpet dot three. And we'll make sure to hide the health bar. Great, we'll take the name and overwrite the old preset. The number three, save it. Then we'll select the other one and we'll create a new preset. And that one's number 13. And rinse and repeat. Just sneaking in while the boss isn't looking. Nice try, escape room artist. Wait, am I the boss? Or, or are you talking like IRL? <laughs> Either or, we're glad you're here. So with this one, again, we're adding a health component. We're hiding the health bar. I'm going to copy the name. We're duplicating the asset. So on this one, we're removing 14. And we're adding the unique text message of kill dot carpet dot four. And on this one, we're doing kill carpet dot fourteen. This one we're removing the four tag. And on this one, we already removed the 14 tag. Cool. Then we save over the old preset. Number four. This one we're making a new preset. 14. Delete, delete. So with those four, we can at least test it again, make sure everything's uh, destroying itself on time. So let's just test it. We can see the first card's always the zero, which is not a problem. Now we're selected number nine there. So basically we have to get to the ball down to the bottom. Number four, so that should be good for our next turn. Nice. Okay, so now they're despawning. They're, you know, being destroyed. So it's destroying the carpet. So when it destroys the carpet. That's also sending out the message to remove it from my hand, I believe. So I think we want a different message to destroy the cards. Or we want that message to only be spoken in this area rather than in our card area. Right now it's fine, I think. We want the message broadcaster to be sending out the messages. Hmm. I do need to think about that some more, but unfortunately we're at time. So we do uh, wrap up our streams after about an hour here at Sandstorm. I do want to remind you all that the Get Steampunked Vox Edit contest is still ongoing. So if you guys are interested in making a steampunk themed vehicle, you can head to the workshop and make something that jumps, dashes, dives, drives, <laughs> any type of vehicle, something someone or something can drive around in. You've got until November 25th and the prize pool is 5,000 sand. So if you are interested, you get steampunked as the theme for this contest. And I wish you all good luck. But yeah, Slater Aid's taking uh, a couple days off. He told me about his his plan, so hope he has a great one. And uh, yeah, Sandstorm is going to be still around on Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. So feel free to uh, stop by there. But for now, I will bid you adieu. I will be back on Wednesday for some box edit. So until then, uh, thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. If uh, Sandbox is still live, we'll send a raid their way. Bye, everybody.